Here, Nipper. <whistles> Nipper, come here, boy. Over here. Speak. <whistles> Louder. <whistles> That's a good dog. Now sit down and listen to your master's voice. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Today, Julius disappears mysteriously, and Alice makes Phil and Frankie search for the kid. They find him in a highly unlikely place and in a most unusual condition. But more about that in a moment. First, this word from RCA Victor. You'll find everything you want in a television set in a super set by RCA Victor. See and compare for yourself. Discover, as millions have, the all-round quality of RCA Victor television. For example, ask your dealer to show you the new 17-inch Glenside Ensemble. The Glenside is a distinctively styled table model with a matching consulate base. It's television with picture power. You'll get clearer, stronger, steadier pictures. The best reception possible in the city or country. The Glenside Ensemble is low price, too. Only $279.95, and that price is complete. It includes federal excise tax and full-year warranty on the 17-inch picture tube. Buy the Glenside Ensemble tomorrow. And remember, for the best installation and service, buy one of RCA Victor's factory service contracts. Ask your dealer for details when you choose your RCA Victor Super Set. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Last week, Phil and Frankie moved to their summer home, the Hollywood Park Racetrack. <laughs> they've been there every day since the track opened, but their luck hasn't been very good and they've lost everything. Now, having run out of ammunition, they've come back to town to reload. <laughs> Remley, I don't know if I ought to take any more money out of the bank. I've been taking it out all week. Well, just a little more isn't going to hurt, Curly. Well, give us a chance to recoup our losses. Now, just stop arguing and get the money. All right. I hate to do this, but I guess taking a little more couldn't do... Uh... Remley, we can't get any more money out of here. Why not? My kids plugged up the hole in their piggy bank <laughs> I wonder why they plugged it up I guess they don't trust their mother <laughs> Curly, don't you have any money left at all? Look in your pocket All I have in my pocket is this old Indian head penny and I can't bear to part with this You see, Granddaddy's picture is on it <laughs> Well, looks like we'll have to borrow it from somebody else does your wife have a piggy bank? Don't be silly. Alice don't have no piggy bank. She keeps her money in an elephant. <laughs> Life size. <laughs> we should be able to borrow it from somebody. Hey, how about your brother-in-law, Willie? You mean old glue pockets? <laughs> he wouldn't lend me a nickel. He might if you would approach him nicely. Instead of insulting him like you always do, butter him up a little. For him, butter's too expensive. <laughs> I'll use chicken fat. <laughs> oh, never mind. Let me handle him. I'll lay it on good. Then you better get ready, Buster. Here he comes. Good morning, fellows. Ah, <laughs> uh, tis William, sweet William, the flower of American manhood. <laughs> Man and a gem of gems. What's the matter, Francis? Have you got a snoot full? <laughs> oh, what a wonderful wit. Curly, you are indeed fortunate to be blessed with an in-law such as this. Do you realize how lucky you are? It wasn't luck. I planned it this way. <laughs> By the day Alice asked me to marry her, I said no. <laughs> and then suddenly I saw William standing in the doorway And I knew I just had to have him as a brother-in-law <laughs> why, 
Why, Philip, what brought this on? You, you never told me you liked me. I didn't. Oh, I thought everybody knew why I've told every little star just how sweet I think you are. Oh, why haven't I told you? I've called the ripples in the brook. Curly, you can Make stop my... now. I gotta record that sometime. <laughs> Just, uh, what are you after, Philip? Curly, I told you William was too smart to be taken in by your blatant flattery. <laughs> Willie, I'll come right to the point. Would you be willing to contribute $20 to preserve a bit of Americana? Certainly. Well, you know I'm interested in preserving American tradition. Uh, just, uh, what are you planning to do? We're going to build a home for the great American statesman, Eddie R. Carroll. <laughs> I don't believe I ever heard of a statesman named R. Carroll. You didn't? Did you ever hear of Churchill? Oh, yes. Well, R. Carroll is to America what Churchill is to Downs. <laughs> oh. Well, what kind of a home are you going to build him? A hacienda in Hylia. <laughs> it's going to be a cute little vine-covered cottage with a tote board over the fireplace and dozens of little two-dollar windows. And the roof will be made Philip, of... Philip, are you using turfdom vernacular? No, we're using wooden shingles. <laughs> Vernaculars leak when it rains. You can stop it. I know you want the money to bet on the races, and you're not going to get it from me. Goodbye. But, William, I... I... Oh, there goes a nice boy. Yeah, he has all the charm of an impacted tooth <laughs> I told you, Remley, we wasn't going to get no money from him Now I guess we just can't go to the racetrack Oh, Curly, don't say that I had my heart set on going And if I don't, I'll just be miserable all day Well, I... I'll just... Oh, hello, Frankie, I didn't know... Oh, what's the matter with you? You look like you're wearing wet socks <laughs> oh, I'm unhappy because I haven't got any money to bet on the... Alice, how would you like to make an investment? Well, what kind of an investment? How would you like to invest $20 and get 6000 back? <laughs> no, thanks, I'm... 6000 She froze in midair like a pointer spot in a covey of quail. <laughs> Sounds like a wonderful investment, Frankie. What is it? Well... My friend Grogan has a horse running at Hollywood Park this afternoon. I've heard enough. Hear me out. This nag is 300 to 1, and it's a cinch to win. Well, if the horse is 300 to 1, what makes you think he's going to win? He's the favorite. <laughs> How could he be the favorite at 300 to 1? He's the only horse in the race with four legs. <laughs> <laughs> Grogan takes no chances. Neither does Faye. Now, you can count me out. I'm not giving you any money to bet on the horses. But Alice... Now, Curly, let me handle it. Uh, Alice, mm -hmm. will you sing for us? Oh, I'd be glad to. That'll be $20, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, what for? Well, you don't think we're going to listen to you for nothing, do you? <laughs> for that, I'm not going to sing, and you're not getting any money. Oh, look, Alice, all we want is 20 that must be Julius with the groceries. Come in. Hey, Curly, maybe we can get the money from Julius. Well, it's worth a try. Let me do the talking. Anybody home? I've drunk the groceries. <laughs> Remley, what do you suppose this is? It's too big for Julius. Yeah, unless the little ape has grown up into a big ape. <laughs> uh, who are you, anyway? I'm Julius's parents. Which one? <laughs> I'm his father. You see, Julius is my son. That makes me his father. Explains things nicely, don't he? <laughs> I'm making deliveries for Julius. Oh, that's nice, Mr. Grugio. Did you bring everything? Uh, I bring what you ordered. <laughs> A pound of liveries. A lump of pumpernickel, <laughs> three pounds of butter, 
And poor filet mignon. You people must be lousy with money. <laughs> Where do you want me to put this stuff? Put it on the kitchen table. <laughs> So you're the paternal parent of Julius, huh? No, I'm his father. <laughs> you see, Julius is my son. That makes me the... Look, I explained this once. <laughs> What's the matter, you stupid or something? <laughs> you know, Mr. Bruzio, I feel a little sorry for you being Julius's father. Why? You don't hate? <laughs> I've been his father all his life, and I got used to it. In fact, I'm proud of this boy. Why? Well, because he's, uh, he's, uh, he's got, a. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Pay no attention to them, Mr. Abruzio. Julius is a very nice boy. You know, someday I'd like to meet Mrs. Abruzio. Julius ain't married? <laughs> I mean your wife. Oh, her. Well, she don't feel like meeting nobody right now. You see, she's a very unhappy woman. Really? Yeah. I can't understand that. With you as her husband and Julius as her son, what in the world she's got to be unhappy about? <laughs> well, she's unhappy because Julius is missing. He ain't been home for three days. Huh? Oh, gosh, Mr. Bruzio, I'm sorry to hear that. What do you suppose happened to him? Well, I don't know. But after the things he's told me about some of his customers, I suspect foul play. Oh, that's ridiculous. His customers are very nice people. Uh, by the way, did Julius ever tell you about me? I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Phil Harris. Oh, the no-talent monster. <laughs> he told me all about you and your best friend. Oh, you mean Frankie Remley? I only know him as the vampire bat. <laughs> what have you two fiends done with my boy? Now, wait a minute, we ain't done nothing with I him. I don't believe you. And I'm warning you, if you don't bring my boy back, I'm going to the police. But Mr. Abruzio... Remember? I'll give you just 24 years to retain him or I'll come <laughs> Come on. Goodbye. Imagine that guy. <laughs> what nerve. Accusing us of doing away with Julius. Oh, What's a... Now, he's upset, Phil. He didn't really mean that. You fellas may do silly things at times, but I know you, and I'm sure you didn't do a thing like that. Did you? <laughs> of course not. We, we have no idea what happened to him. Oh, we haven't seen Julius since Wednesday. That's the day he got in our hair. We locked him in the den closet. <laughs> ah, that was quite a gag, wasn't it, Curly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have heard him scream trying to get out of there. I'll <laughs> never forget. <the> Remley. <laughs> what? Did you ever let him out of that closet? <laughs> no, I thought you did. <laughs> Not me. Maybe he's still in there. You think we ought to look? No! <laughs> we find him, it'll spoil our whole day. Now, stop talking nonsense. If he was still in the closet, he would have made a racket and we would have heard him. So I want you two to go out and help look for him. But, Alice, we don't... You heard me. Go ahead, both all of right, you. All right, all right. We'll look, we'll look. Come on, Remley. Right. What do you think we ought to look for that kid? The playground, the public library, or the city pound? How about the Follies Burlesque? <laughs> yeah, that's a good-looking place <laughs> We could go in that No, hmm? no, I can't do it Alice told us to find Julius And we're not going to a burlesque show But Curly, I hear there's a girl singer down there Who's excellent I said we're not going Now, if you want to hear somebody sing I'll sing for you Curly, it's not the same I'll make it the same <laughs> It'll be exactly the same Because while I'm singing I'll shake it up a little bit <laughs> And for you I might even drop a shoulder strap oh. 
Bill Jackson was a poor old dub who joined the Darktown Poker Club and cursed the day, told him he would join. Oh, that money used to go like it had wings. If he held queen, someone had kings, and each night he would contribute all that coin. Then he said, I'm going to play him tight tonight to be no bobtail pleasures make me bite. He said, when I get to nest my hands will be a peach. Played him tight and lost his pile, and Bill got peevish after a while, so he rose, looked all around, and made this speech. Did you all see this razor? I had it sharpened just a day. Now, I'm coming in with my rules. I want you to follow when you play boy. Keep your hands up on the table while you're dealing, please. Don't be running them wildies in between your knees. And don't be making them funny signs like you're trying to tip off your hand just talking American, boy. American, so's I can understand. And don't be getting them off the bottom because, ooh, that's rough. <laughs> Take five, five, then stop. That's enough. Now, when you bet put up the chips, I don't like it when you shy. And if you get busted, go get something. I'm going to be here by and by. Pass them cards and let me shuffle every time before you deal. Let me look them over, because I love to see. But, uh, you ain't going to play this game according to no Mr. Hoyle. You're going to play this game according to me. Now, sitting right there in that there clan, they chanced to be a one-eyed man. Bill kept watching him out of the corner of his eye. One eye dealing then and cost that bill another five or ten. Bill got up again, looked all around him with a sigh. He said, Loud is an awful shame. Said, Someone's cheating this year game. Said, Cause uh, it ain't old dude for me to name the guy. So I'll refrain from mentioning the party's name. If I catch him cheating just once again, I'm gonna take his fist and close that other eye. Now, do you see that brand new razor? I had it sharpened just today. I'm coming in with my rules. You must follow when you play egghead. Keep your bony hands up there while you're giving them out, please. Don't be running them aces down there in between your knees. Stop making all them funny signs, because you're still trying to tip off your hand. You better talk an American boy, big A, 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 so as I can understand. And quit getting them off the bottom. I'm trying to tell you it's rough. This is the Army game. Five, five, halt. That's enough. Now, when you bet, put up the reds and blues. I don't like it when you shy. Then if you run out of gas, go get pumped up. I'm going to be here by and by. Pass them pasteboard and let me riffle every time before you deal. Let me irrigate around with them, because I want to see. Because I keep on telling you, you ain't going to play this game according to Mr. Hoyley. You're going to play this game according to me. Now, Henry, if you'll break the seal on that new deck of bicycles, we'll get on from here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hope they find Julius. I'm worried about him. I wonder where he could be all this... Is it possible he's still in the closet? Oh, no, that's ridiculous. But maybe I'd better look. I feel silly doing this, but it will ease my mind. Hi, Miss Faith! Oh. <laughs> Julius, have you been in there for three days? Of course not. I sneaked in the back door a little while ago to talk to you. When I heard my old man come in, I hid in this closet so he wouldn't see me. Well, why don't you want him to see you? He's worried about you. Where have you been? I've been hiding out. I'm in trouble. Last week, I stole a skeleton from the biology class in school. A skeleton? Well, why did you do that? For a gag. I put a dress on it and introduced it to Mr. Remley. <laughs> <laughs> what for? Well, I heard he'd go out with anything, and I wanted to find out if he was... <laughs> Oh, Julius, that's ridiculous. Even Frankie wouldn't go for that. Then how come he made a date with her for tomorrow night? <laughs> oh, stop it. He thinks Dorothy's beautiful. Now, Julius, please, that's enough. You'd better go home. Your father thinks something happened to you, and he's worried about you. In fact, I sent Mr. Harris and Mr. Remley out to look for you. Oh, you picked a good posse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, Julius, that's not nice. They're out looking for you high and low. Yeah, and the higher they get, the lower the places they look. <laughs> Damn it, I don't care what happens to me. Three days ago, they locked me in this closet and left me here. If I didn't have sharp teeth, I never could have picked the lock. <laughs> I heard about that, Julius, and I'm sorry. You know, they should be taught a lesson. You said it. For all they know, I might still be in this... Wait a minute. Do they know I'm not in the closet? 
Well, they didn't look. Well, then I know how to teach them a lesson. When they come back, you suggest that they look in the closet. But instead of me, they'll find that skeleton. What skeleton? <laughs> Mr. Remley's girlfriend. <laughs> When they see the skeleton, they'll think that's all that's left of me. Oh, I get it. I'll go out and get the skeleton. Good. And in the meantime, I'll call your father and tell him you're all right. <laughs> Miss Fay, I'm getting kind of tired of hiding behind this sofa. When are those guys going to come home? Oh, they'll be here soon. Do you have everything set up? Yeah, I got the skeleton standing up in the closet. But how did you get it to stand up? I propped it up with a fishing pole. This should scare the life out of them guys. Wonder what's taking them so long. Well, I told you. They're out looking for you, Julius. Do you think they're really looking for me? Well, of course they are. They've spent the whole afternoon looking everywhere for you. Well, the boys are probably all tired out. And... <gasps> Here they come. Duck. Oh, pretty girl. Like <laughs> a melody. Hey, Remley, you were so right. That girl had a wonderful voice. That kid is loaded with talent. Yeah, ain't she? I just loved it when she sang, Powder my back for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it too. <laughs> well, I had to be a gentleman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Fellas, it's about time you got home. Did you find him? Find who? <laughs> Julius. Oh, Julius, oh... You know something, honey? We looked everywhere. We can't find him anyplace. We looked all over. Yeah, we looked in the balcony, the mezzanine, the lobby. Frankie. <laughs> Curly even crawled up on the runway. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, fellas. Fellas, while you were gone, I had a terrible thought. Remember what you said about locking Julius in the closet? Suppose he's still in there. Oh, that's ridiculous. He couldn't be in there. I don't know. You'd better look. All right, all right. I think it's silly, but if it'll make you happy, I'll look in the closet. He ain't in there. Didn't you see anything in the closet? Just the usual things, a tennis racket, golf shoes, and a skinny guy fly casting. <laughs> what was that again, Curly? <laughs> I said all I saw was... Wait a minute. There's something wrong in there. What is it? I don't play tennis. <laughs> What's that tennis racket doing in there? The skinny guy fly casting doesn't bother you, huh? Oh, Curly just made that up. Oh, I did, huh? If you don't believe me, go look for yourself. All right, I'll look. Dorothy, what are you doing in Curly? <laughs> I didn't see no dame in there when I looked. Frankie, that's not Dorothy. Don't tell me. I'd recognize her ghastly complexion, deep set eyes, and silly grin any place. <laughs> oh, I gotta look again. Uh, pardon me, miss, but Remley. This ain't no dame in here, it's a skeleton. Oh, Phil, don't say that. Why not? Don't you realize that skeleton must be all that's left of little Julius? Oh no. No. <laughs> hey, Remley, we locked that poor kid in the closet. Now look at him. He's just a pile of soup bones. <laughs> don't he look terrible? I don't think so. <laughs> he lost a little weight, but off him, it looks like... <laughs> Frankie, how can you be so heartless with Julius in that condition? Alice is right. Julius is nothing but bones. And we're responsible. Now, don't say that, Curly. We didn't mean to harm the kid. It was just an accident. You think we ought to take him to the police? No. Let's give him to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll bury him. Phil, Phil, you can't do that. Why not? We don't have a dog. Oh. You'll have to bury him yourself. Now, take him out in the yard and bury him. Alice. Mm. I was only kidding How can you be so callous? We can't... Now do as I tell you Bury the skeleton But be careful where you dig Don't mess up my petunia bed 
Ooh, she's a fiend. <laughs> but a neat one. <laughs> oh, Remy, let's carry this thing out and bury it. Okay. I'll take one arm, you take the other, we'll walk them out. <laughs> Curly. What? I don't like the way these bones are rattling. <laughs> Me neither. If anybody hears this, we might get arrested for running a float and crap game. <laughs> Remley, I'm scared. This is the worst thing we've ever done. Oh, come now, Curly. Now, let's get him out in the yard. Julius, you can come out now. They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> we sure got them scared. Yes, and I think they've learned their lesson. Maybe you'd better go out and tell them it was only a gag. Not yet. I got one more thing I want to do. I'm going to sneak up behind him in the dark and add the final touch. Oh, but Julius, you've already made nervous wrecks out of both of them. I ain't going to be happy until they're gibbering idiots. <laughs> now to sneak up on them and unhinge their little minds. This should prove very entertaining. Hey, Curly. What? Wish this kid had stopped rattling. Frankie. <laughs> I don't care what Alice said. I don't think we should bury Julius. Neither do I. I think we ought to take a skeleton to the police station. I don't want to go to the police station. Nobody asked you. <laughs> yeah, you keep out of this. Curly, what will we tell the cops? Well, we'll tell him he locked himself in the closet and he couldn't get out. Yeah, they ought to believe that. I don't think they will. Why not? Because I'm going to tell them the truth. Who's going to listen to you in your condition? You're nothing but a bunch of... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ramley's talking. I wondered when you'd notice that. Curly, he's haunting us. Julius, get away from us. Yeah, go down below where you belong. <laughs> the chef's waiting for you in the barbecue pit. <laughs> I knew this skeleton couldn't be Julius. Of course not. I'm alive. Well, you ain't gonna be for long. Come on, Remley. Drop that skeleton. Let's get him. Get all of them. Come on. Well, come on, Remley. Let's chase him. You chase him. I'm gonna stay here with Dorothy. <laughs> Were you hurt when we dropped you, dear? Will you come on? <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. For music lovers everywhere, from RCA Victor comes another collector's masterpiece, another must for your record library. It's the complete recording of Puccini's Tosca, starring the brilliant Maria Cornelia and Benjamino Gigli, now available on RCA Victor 45 and long play Red Seal Record. Accompanied by the Royal Opera House Orchestra and Chorus of Rome, under the direction of Olivero de Febritis, Gigli's singing in Tosca has long been recognized as one of the greatest performances ever recorded. It was made when both Cornelia and Gigli were at the height of their vocal powers. And these artists capture and deliver all the impassioned beauty and vivid drama of Puccini's melody. No music lover will want to miss it. This complete opera is available now on both RCA Victor 45 and Long Play Record. See your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow. Ask for Puccini's Tosca, sung by Benjamino Gigli and Maria Cornelia, an RCA Victor Collector's Issue album. Only by facing the problem of cancer squarely can we hope someday to conquer it. And because anyone can develop cancer, because one out of every five Americans will develop it, Everyone must take an active part in the fight against it. So mail your generous contributions to cancer, care of your local post office. Thank you, and good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or record, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in television. Next, Theater Guild on the Air presents Over 21 on NBC.